let's discuss last part of mathematical logic that is introduction to proof some statement will be given and we need to give valid argument to prove that that statement is true proof is a valid argument that establish the truth of a mathematical statement let's discuss some terminology used in the proof first one is theorem a theorem is a statement that can be shown to be true less important theorem sometimes called as propositions or called as fact or results next is a proof a proof is a valid argument that establish the truth of a theorem next is axiom a statement used in a proof can include axioms or called as postulates which are statements we assume to be true next is lemma a less important theorem that is helpful in the proof called as lemma lemma is derived from the theorem next is corollary a corollary is a theorem that can be established directly from theorem that has been proved so lemma and corollary these two are derived from the theorem or you can say less important theorems next a conjecture is a statement that is being proposed to be a true statement so many time it is false so they are not theorem theorem is true lemma is true corollary is true but this conjecture may be true or may be false next is method of proving there are two type of method of proving one is direct proof another is indirect proof so a direct proof shows that a conditional statement p implies q is true by showing that if p is true then q must be true p implies q is true if p is true then q must be true so from premises we'll derive the conclusion from p we'll derive the q we'll use axiom theorem then rule of inference and we'll try to prove that q is true so in direct proof we assume that p is true and we'll use the axiom definitions previous proven theorem then rule of inference to show that q must be true let's see one definition definition one it's about odd and even integer the integer n is even if there exists an integer k such that n equals to 2k and n is odd if there exists integer k such that n equals to 2k plus 1 and two integer have same parity if both are either even or both are either odd and they have opposite parity if one is even other is odd like 2 and 5 they have opposite parity 2 is even 5 is odd let 4 and 6 both are even so both have same parity let's see one example of direct proof example 1 give a direct proof of the theorem if n is odd integer then n square is odd so n is odd means we can write n equals to 2k plus 1 we have n is odd so that is our p of n and from that we will prove that n square is odd that is our q so p implies q p is n is odd integer q is n square is odd and n we can write as 2k plus 1 now n square that we can write as 2k plus 1 whole square so a plus b whole square that is a square plus b square plus 2ab so it will be 4k square plus 4k plus 1 we can take 2 as a common after taking 2 common it will be 2k square plus 2k plus 1 so 2 let this as a x 2 multiplied by x plus 1 it is in this format or format so you can say n square is also odd if n is odd then n square is also odd so this is our n and this is our n square so hence we prove that by definition of odd integer if n is an odd integer then n square is also odd next example 2 give a direct proof that if m and n are both perfect square then m multiplication n is also a perfect square 
perfect square is 4 you can write 2 multiplication 2 so an integer a is a perfect square if there is an integer b such that a equals to b square 9 is a perfect square you can write 3 multiplication 3 so let m equals to s square m is a perfect square and n equals to t square m n are both perfect square that is our p then m n will also be perfect square that is our q so m n are perfect square that's why you can write m equals to s square n equals to t square now m multiplication n that will be s square multiplication t square so what we can write we can write s t whole square that is equivalence to s square t square so now m n is a perfect square as it is square of s t so by definition of perfect square it follows that m n is also perfect square because it is the square of s t which is a integer s t is a integer and we found m n equals to s t square so here p is both m n r perfect square and q is m n m multiplication n is also a perfect square so if p is true then q is also true this is all about direct proof in next lecture i will discuss indirect proof if today lecture is helpful for you please like share and subscribe thank you